Welcome to Wild Game Wednesday. I'm Montana Max, of course, joining you from Montana Max National Forest, where we're always streaming, we're always cooking, we're always living life to the fullest. It's an episode of Wild Game Wednesday, if you couldn't tell by a real new slick intro. We're always trying to improve, always trying to do better. Someone's already on and joined us, so thank you for being here. We're going to get rocking and rolling real quickly here. First things first, what we're making tonight. What are we making tonight? We are making venison. No, we're not. We did venison before. That was a trick. You're supposed, she's like, oh, I'm so excited. And she knows it's wrong. Jen, of course, is always right over here joining me as usual. And Parker's running controls tonight because he doesn't have to work. So we got the whole crew out here living life large and in charge. And what we're doing tonight is actually the mother of all venison, and that is elk. Yes? Huh? That'd be great. So we're doing uh, a smoked elk dish with spaghetti squash. See, there it goes Jen through the background of the forest. And we actually have a thunderstorm happening right now. It's very light. It's on its way out. But that's, I mean, that's Wild Game Wednesday. That's outdoor cooking. That's what we do. So, time to pull the sleeves up and get into it and do is we are going to get our spaghetti squash going, which are these beautiful yellow squash here, because they take a while to cook. And being that they take a while to cook and some of our other stuff isn't going to take as long, we need to get them on the Traeger right away. So I'm going to use my big Nakira knife designed for vegetable slicing and dicing. We're going to cut these bad boys and we're going to have them right down the middle. Now, I really want to pick this up and give it the, the samurai chop, but I have a feeling I might break the table if I do that. So I'm going to refrain from that action. There we go, work our way around, and we got these bad boys cut right in half. Let's get the other guy here. Squash is in season, perfect dish for fall. There we go. Awesome. Table's a little unstable, so I had to be extra cautious. You see, extra cautious means you don't lose a frickin' finger. All right. Now, you'll see in the middle here, there is tons and tons of seeds and gunk we don't want to cook. So we're just going to take a spoon. Kind of like you would just when you're cleaning out a pumpkin. We're going to get all that, that nastiness out of there. I'm going to bring it over the trash here. Try not to have squash seeds absolutely everywhere outside. Thanks, babe. And we'll get all those nasty, nasty squash guts outside of our squash. All right. If you just joined us, thank you. I'm just hollowing out some beautiful spaghetti squash here that we're going to be using as a vessel. That's right, a vessel. That vessel is going to house our beautiful elk that we'll be doing up. We're going to be cooking this entire meal on our Traeger. I got the beast over here rocking away. And we're cooking on high heat tonight, 400 degrees. Not messing around. No low and slow tonight. So I guess technically this wouldn't be barbecue. This would be grilling. I uh, saw some story where somebody got in big trouble down south because they used barbecue uh 
interchangeably for grilling. And they are not the same at all. In fact, grilling is high heat, quick and done. Barbecue is traditionally defined as a method of low and slow cooking. So you'd be cooking at a much lower temperature uh, for a lot longer time. The beautiful thing is with our Traeger, really with any grill, but especially our Traeger, we have the ability to do both. And if you've never cooked a spaghetti squash, like I mentioned earlier, we're getting rid of all the, the nasty guts in there, the seeds and all of the, the stuff. It's very much the same consistency and texture as a pumpkin, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, but isn't a pumpkin a squash? It is a type of squash. You cannot correct me this time. I am correct. It is a squash, uh, which, I mean, tomorrow. October, pumpkin season. I'm not going to make that same mistake on pumpkin beer, though. I did get a line on a potentially better pumpkin beer, so we'll have to try that on another Wild Game Wednesday and see if I uh, have the same struggle I did last time with my pumpkin beer. I'm not naming names, but I did not enjoy it. And I love pumpkin. My favorite pie in the world is pumpkin pie. That's probably my, one of my favorite things about this season is the copious amounts of pumpkin pie that I get to consume. So just using our spoon, we're almost there. Super easy. Do it over a trash can if you're inside. If you're outside, do it wherever you feel. Perhaps your neighbor's lawn. I'm sure they would appreciate squash. So there you can see all cleaned out. Very nice. This guy needs just a little bit more work. Like I said, we're going to be serving actually with the squash is the main vessel. So we don't want any of that stuff in there. We don't want people taking a bite of our dish and getting uh, a big uh, forkful of nasty. Not going to have a good time if they do that. finish this guy off real quick because we need to get these on people don't want to hear me talk just about junk all night they want to see the food so we got to get the food going maybe this year we'll make a uh, squash -o lantern instead of jack-o-lanterns this guy does not want to play nice with me. So I'm going to call in a little reinforcement here. I've actually got it sitting right here. I'm going to clean her up with a little paper towel action because it is a little slimy grimy. So that paper towel gave me a nice ability to grab a hold of it. There we go. Butamus. All right. Squash has been squashed. Now, as I say, with everything we cook, season everything, season everything, season everything. So we're going to spray our, we're using a little uh, standard foil half pan here. We're going to use two since we got four squash. Spray our pan so it doesn't stick to it. And that's just for the sticky sticky. We don't want that. There we go. And then we are going to take our squash right here and drizzle a little olive oil. I'm going to take my glove, place it on my delicate little hand here and we're going to make sure that squash has oil oil all over the surfaces in there pull out any loose strands you may have hanging about 
Nice even coating. All right. Awesome, awesome. Normally, if I'm in the kitchen inside, I don't put on a glove to put on olive oil. I just wash my hands in the sink. But unfortunately, I don't have a sink right here. So that's why I do that. Keep things moving along for you, our faithful viewers. All right. Now, let's season. We're going to just use a little of one of our household favorites, of course, is Croy Valley Garlic Booster. Bam! Gratuitous Croy Valley Booster shot. Awesome. And we're going to just sprinkle that uh, liberally, liberally. I always have a hard time with that word for some reason. All around, inside, all over, nice even coated. Excuse me. On our spaghetti squashes here. It smells so good. It's, we use this on so many different dishes. If you were to buy one Croy Valley product and have one Croy Valley product in your pantry, this would be the one to buy. Garlic booster. All right. Now that they have been seasoned up, leave the, leave the little stem on. Because when you serve that, people are going to be like, oh my, oh my, you are just so festive with your squash. You're like, I know. That's the way I planned it. No need to cut that off. People, uh, mainly your guests, should be smart enough not to eat that. We're just eating the inside of the squash here. All right, so like I said, 400 degrees on the beast here. Pop this open. Let's get our squash rocking. I do have a cast iron pan inside here as well. Which we got nice and hot, little oil working in it already. And I'm gonna bend my pans up just a little bit so they both fit in there nice. We get the lid flush solid. Cast iron pan is on there, and that is where we're gonna actually be cooking all of our elky goodness here in a minute. So, squash, that's it, man. That's it for now. It's going to sit there and it's going to ride for about 40 to 50 minutes. So in the meantime, I'd really be appreciative to enjoy your company. So as always, if you have questions on anything we're cooking or anything we're not cooking, anything you've seen in the past, whatever, something you're cooking this weekend, something you're cooking tonight, if you have questions, comments, concerns, hopes, fears, dreams, hop in that chat. Let me know. That's why I'm here. I do professional cooking uh, in a competitive scene. Jen and I are the dream team, depending on the event, sometimes more dreamy than others. Uh, but we compete all across the board in a bunch of different stuff. If you joined us before, you know that. But if you're joining us for the first time, we compete in barbecue competitions, KCBS, SCA, which are state competitions. We compete in Culinary Fight Club, World Food Championships, a myriad of virtual online contests, and really any place that'll take us. If it's our neighbors and they have a chili contest, we're there to kick their asses. That's right, Randy. You'll never see this, but if you do, I'm coming for you. He's two houses down. He's probably like, whatever. All right, so squash is on. I'm going to look at my phone here because I don't have a watch on just so I can have a rough time. Uh, not a rough time. I might have a, a rough time anyways, but... Uh, an idea of time for what's going on. All right, so now it's time to start getting stuff prepped for Elk City. And the biggest thing that we need to prep, well, there's three, four things that we're gonna prep in this. So break out your notepad, write it down, mushrooms, rosemary, onion, and garlic. So, and as always, cheers. You like how my koozie matches my sweater? That's like, I like to coordinate. Treat yourself when you cook. If Julia Childs has taught us anything from years ago, it's totally appropriate to have a few glasses of wine or whatever you like while you cook. All right, let's get the worst thing out of the way. And that's always onion, right? Here's your pro tip 
on onion for the day. If you hate the tears when you chop onions, all you have to do is take your onion, throw it in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes. You will notice that you won't get that same sort of uh, tears coming out. When you get it cold, the biological nature of the onion, it doesn't release all the stuff that gets into your tear ducts and makes you cry. So if you are like, I hate chopping onions, it's a pain in the ass, it makes me cry all the time, tears, uh, just throw it, in the, throw it in your refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, we're just going to dice this up. Welcome to my mom's most favorite part of the show, prepping. I say that facetiously, Jen liked that one too. But I got to cook squash, mom. So you know what? You're going to see everything prepped tonight. That's the way it is. All right, onion, onion, onion. Here we go. Grip on the blade. We've talked about that. Keep your knuckles down so you don't cut your fingers off. Don't cut like this. Don't cut like this. Don't cut like this. Definitely don't cut like that. Don't make it rain with onions. There's a series on Amazon or YouTube, and sometimes when I'm like saying this stuff to people, whether there's people there or not, or people watch later, I always think to myself, like, people know how to cut onions. They don't want to hear this stuff. They don't want to hear that crap. They're like, it's an onion, right? Well, there's a show we saw on YouTube, and they're all like super microcosms, uh, things that they just get average random people to do, and it's like, how to cut an onion was one of them, for example. And the way these people went about cutting onions and holding knives and stuff, maybe it's not as dumb as I think, you know? And it's like maybe people need those tips and things like that. So hopefully I'm offering that to anybody that's watching, you know, some of those basics. Not everyone gets that. I mean, I didn't have that. I didn't start like that. We've only been in the professional circuit for about, we're going on our third year now, right? About three, about three years in the professional circuit. And it was a quick climb there. like real quick so i learned a lot real quickly and so not everyone has that not everyone knows that some of our viewers are younger they definitely probably don't know that so if you do know how to cut an onion you're probably on the wrong show but still hit follow and subscribe but if not and some of that stuff's redundant i do it so our children the children's our grown children's the adults who act like children's don't lose their fingers anyways Let's get back to chopping some onions. I mentioned this before, but I actually, Parker's got the camera. If you want to back it out just a little bit for me, brother. So you've seen me talk about the pinch grip where you hold the knife. You literally pinch the top of the blade. That way there's no wonkiness. I don't remember who it is because I'm not opposed to talking trash, as many people who know me will tell you. Uh, so pinch grip, you see there's no play in the blade there. You have complete control of your blade. But I literally saw someone prepping vegetables and holding the knife like this. That is so scary. That is so scary. Uh, I didn't watch the stream all the way through the end, but let's hope she's got all of her fingers. All right. Nice even sizes here. Got everything lined up and just go around the half moon. Notice, I am not crying. No tears. Remember, throw that onion in the fridge. 10, 15 minutes. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. If you tuned into our show on Friday, we took Sunday Smoke Down off because Jen and I went out adventuring. We had a really good time. Saw a 5K race. Saw is the keyword. Did not run in. Uh, and we went. We like to go out off the grid. We'll have to do some streaming off the grid when we have good signals and things like that. But uh, if you join us on our Friday show, we made a Takis dish. We were challenged by one of our viewers. They said, can you cook something with Takis? 
I took the challenge. I'm always about the challenge. I posted that on our Twitter too. If you got a challenge, you want uh, you have a favorite food or a favorite ingredient, by all means, let us know what you want to see, and we'll more than likely do it. I can't say with everything. Like if you're like, oh, can you cook a dog turd? No, I'm not gonna cook a dog turd. I'm not sick in the head. Like some people that would suggest that would be sick in the head. But I mean, if there's a food or something, or if you just want to test me, I love that. I absolutely love that, right? So you're like, hmm, I'd like to see you cook gummy worms. Jen said gummy worms. Absolutely, whatever it is. I feel, <laughs> feel free to throw us a challenge. You don't have to do it in chat. You can always pop it at us in our DMs or whatever. Tweet at me, send a carrier pigeon, Ma mail, you be quiet over there. She's like, the more challenging, the better. Yeah, I'm going to make you cook one of these streams when we get something that I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'll be like, it's a gen stream. She's like, nope, nope. I just want to sit over here with my blanket and talk trash. But that's uh, something that we've incorporated now into our Friday night barbecue parties. If you ever have a challenge you want to throw down, by all means, throw it down. All right, now we got some garlic here. Take off those nasty bits at the end, the woody parts. And we're gonna dice these up too. Two cloves of garlic, super easy. Someone just joined us. Thank you for joining us. We're cooking spaghetti squash. We're not actually cooking. We're grilling, smoking spaghetti squash. And we are going to uh, be creating an entire one squash instead of like one bowl. You've heard the term uh, like one bowl meal, one squash meal here. And we're just prepping and mincing up some fresh garlic. And you'll see here, I keep, keep my hand on the front of this blade, and I'm using it just, just like a lever, simple machine. We're going to get that real nice and fine, because we're going to cook with that. It's going to go into our cast iron pan. We want it to cook down and infuse with all the flavors that we have going on. Ooh. Now, you saw there, my cutting board slid on me a little bit. If you have cutting boards at home that slide, and this is something I should have done here, and I always think to myself when it happens, I'm like, I got, I got to do that next time. I really got to do that next time. Throw a little uh, washcloth or towel, towel, towel underneath your cutting board, and it'll help prevent from slipping. Super easy. All right. Garlic. Got that minced up nicely. I'm going to clean my blade here a little bit. You ever notice how you really miss a watch when you don't have one on if you've worn one? I know, I know the kids of today aren't into watch wearing so much. But I am, man. And I miss it. I miss my smart watch. Because they updated it and now it has a problem. I know. Oh, no, is right. All right. Did the onion. Check. Mince the garlic. Check. Reward yourself. Check. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for joining us on Twitch. Uh, thanks for joining us on YouTube. We're getting ready here to prep up some beautiful baby Bella mushrooms. Now, you'll see when you go to the grocery store, there's all kinds of mushrooms, right? Shiitake, portobello, baby bella, all kinds of stuff. They're all good. They're all good. And most of them can be used interchangeably in your cooking without too many issues. Uh, an interesting thing about baby bella and portobello mushrooms, they're the same mushroom. Exact same. It's just that they were harvested at different times. So the portobellos are like the big ones, the giant caps. 
Baby Bellas are these cute little guys. Little fun guy. So we're gonna get a handful of these guys ready to go. If you guys have heard me talk about Olivia, because I don't just cook for me, I cook for everyone at us uh, in our great lodge here in Montana Max National Forest, based in Hastings, Minnesota. Uh, she hates mushrooms, absolutely detests mushrooms. So through the throughout the years here, I've often taken it as my goal to incorporate mushrooms into any dish that I can and then uh, see if she notices or not. She hasn't caught me yet, hasn't caught me yet. You dice anything small enough and cut it down, you ain't gonna know, but you're gonna get all that benefits of what? Flavor. I need, I need a clock. Flavor, flavor. For you kids out there, he was a rapper. All right, same thing with this. We're just gonna dice these up. A little bit more rustic. We're gonna just keep them more in a chunkier form. Don't have to be precise. Some larger, some smaller, that's all right. When we cook our elk in the cast iron pan, these are gonna infuse some wonderful wild flavor into our dish. Super easy. Super fun. And all this stuff will get seasoned. Remember I say all the time when we're taking a trip to flavor country, season everything, season everything. Awesome. And you'll see here, I'm using uh, what's called a Santoku knife. It's just nothing fancy about it. It's the Japanese version of a chef's knife. That's all it is. And it's got these little divots in it, the gratins, which make it great for chopping vegetables because they don't stick to your blade very much. It creates a little air bubble where if you're using a traditional chef knife, uh, that's a flat blade and stuff can stick to your blade a little bit more. All right, so that is done. Now let's get our rosemary prepped. Set our knife right there. Oh, I almost forgot. Mushrooms done. Treat yourself. Fortunately, this one's gone. Parker, come at me here with the big cam and zoom it out. Zoom it out, zoom it out, there we go. How we doing? Come with me to the land of imagination. One of my favorite Traeger accessories, which you're not gonna be able to see straight on. There we go, follow it, follow it. It's like magic. That's right, my Traeger just opened my beer. That's a proper rewarding of yourself. All right. Awesome. Thanks for coming along to the land of imagination. Let's get our rosemary together. Rosemary. Uh -huh. This we're not going to dice up. This we're just going to pull off the little rosemary from the little pine tree with our fingers, that's all we have to do. We are gonna dice a little bit after we pull it off, but you don't want the big stem in there. It's like a little tree. You don't want the stem in your cooking, you just want the little leaves. So we're just gonna pull those off, separate them out. What time you got, babe? 7.35, doing all right. Checking for my squash. If you're joining us here on Twitch, hit that follow button. We got tons of fun stuff we like to do all the time. Wednesday's Wild Game Wednesday, where we do a little bit more rustic dishes based around things you can get actually out in nature. I love the way rosemary smells. 
I'm not just smelling my hands because I'm a weirdo. I'm a weirdo, but that's not the reason why. But uh, I could just smell the rosemary. Thank you, Jen. Mmm, yes. Or I could just super stop. All right. Uh, so w anyways, I lost my tr train of thought because fresh rosemary is awesome, especially when you're cooking heartier meats like wild game. Uh, if you don't have a elk laying around, rosemary is awesome to use with uh, beef or pork. Pork is a red meat. Yes, I bet you didn't know that. It is. Pork is a red meat. It's not the other white meat. That was a marketing campaign, and it's not accurate. It's red meat. The redder, the better when it comes to pork. But anyways, uh, yeah, if you're following us on Twitch, hit that follow button. If you already do, thank you so much. If you're on YouTube and joining us from that world of streaming, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. That way you'll get notified whenever we go live because we do uh, Wild Game Wednesday every Wednesday where we do awesome stuff that's based out of nature. Friday's our Friday night barbecue party where we basically have a bunch of drinks, cook a bunch of fun stuff, and have a barbecue party. And you are invited. And then uh, Sunday's our game day smoke down where we do like tailgate themed stuff or stadium foods. Really stuff that's not super healthy for you but is super delicious for you and great while you're watching the game or watching Twitch. Maybe it's eSports season and you want to root on your favorite streamer? Show you how to make the perfect plate of nachos. Show you how to make uh, all kinds of stuff. We, a couple weeks ago here, we made a massive, and you can watch it back on our Twitch or YouTube channels, massive meatball hoagie that actually won an award from Traeger, which I was super stoked about. Uh, but all kinds of fun stuff. And then we also do uh, impromptu stuff too. So you want to get those notifications on because we might just pop in and be like, what up? We'll be in Cray Cray. Why don't you join us? All right. So there's a rosemary. Pulled off the giant stems. We don't want those giant stems. I'm going to give the little ingredient shuffle here. And then we're going to go ahead. Same rocky motion that we did with the garlic. And we're going to go right through our rosemary here. can be different shapes and sizes with the rosemary. Remember, we're doing a little bit. It's wild game. It's rustic. We don't have much going on out here. The only thing we're cooking on, no burner tonight, nothing like that, just the Traeger. So if you got a portable grill, if you got a Weber kettle or whatever you have, you can do this all on one cooking device. So if you go out into nature, like Jen and I like to do, Oftentimes, our nature is accompanied with a lovely winery. But we're not here to judge, just love. If you can find nature with a winery like we did, we went to uh, Round Lake Vineyards this weekend. Nature was there. They had a beautiful lake that was round, uh, a winery, and nature. Everything was all together. All right, rosemary, done. Beautiful place, by the way, Round Lake, Minnesota. Uh, if you don't know, we're here in Minnesota. But uh, I think one of my favorite things, and Jen probably would uh, agree to this, is we met alpaca friends. We are big fans of alpacas here. If you don't know what an alpaca is, it's like a llama, but not as nasty because llamas are nasty. And they're super cute and super soft. And they don't have hair. They don't have wool. What do they have? No, they don't. It's fiber. Fiber. It's not wool. It's not hair. It's fiber. They have their own distinction, which is pretty awesome. All right. That's pretty much it for ingredient prep. We're going right along here. Love it. Let's get things rolling in the cast iron pan. Squash is doing great. You can already smell it. I'll step back here. It's not really going to look anything different. Squash is great, like potatoes and stuff like that. It is going to absorb that smoke. Being that we're cooking at a higher temperature, it's not going to absorb uh, 
tons of smoke because when you're cooking at a higher temperature, you're not getting as much smoke. Like I said, we're, we're what they would be called grilling, not smoking. I'm actually going to use some real olive oil, olive oil in the pan. There we go. Because what first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw in all those delicious onions that we just did, right? And we're going to start cooking those down. I should be using my Nikiri blade for this. One of the things I love about this blade right here is how wide it is. Pick up all your ingredients, one fell swoop, and into the pan. And of course, now it is going to be time for our good friend, Spoonie McSpoonerson. And of course, what do we do? Season everything. That's right, kids. We're gonna drop a little salt in there. Just a little pepper. Not much, because we're gonna be adding different ingredients, so we don't need to overdo it here. Just a little bit onto them onions. Pan is nice and hot. I'll get closer here. You're gonna hear the Traeger. And then, uh, <laughs> that was two swoops. Can you hear the onion sizzle? Are you excited to watch me catch myself on fire with my mic when it falls into the Traeger? I wonder if she means two scoops, like two scoops of raisins. <laughs> Always love it when Frankie shows up. Love you, Mom, and I love you, Dad, because I'm sure he's there watching, too, and I'm sure more impressed by the minute. Treat yourself. All right, so we're going to get the onions working there. It's not going to take very long, but we're going to get those little bit caramelized up, all that kind of good stuff. They're going to start working first. Squash is going. We're about halfway through on squash land. Super easy. That's another thing I love about grilling, smoking, besides hanging out with beautiful Jen over there in her blanket because it's fall now, is you get to have a few drinks. You get to relax. You get to kick it with your homeboys and homegirls. So if you just joined us, we got squash on, spaghetti squash to be specific. We just threw in some onions into our cast iron pan because we are doing elk tonight. I keep wanting to say venison, but it's the biggest venison. It's not just venison. It's not whitetail. It's beautiful elk. Elk has a different color than venison. It's darker, it's richer, it's also very lean. So you need to be very careful when you're cooking with it. But the first thing we need to do is get the flavors working. Elk has a really awesome natural flavor and we're looking to enhance that. So we're gonna do that with onion. Where did the elk come from? Jen says, tell them where the elk come from. Most of the wild game that we have, not all of it, as you'll see in future episodes, because I've got wild game for days here, but most of our elk comes from, I'll give you guys a guess. Montana. Most of it is uh, harvested uh, by a good friend of our family's, uh, Kevin Barsotti. Uh, Avid Hunter does great work. Hopefully he can uh, join us here on one of these streams by watching and maybe chiming in. Uh, I guess not the most tech savvy guy. He's not about the technology. But yeah, harvests us a lot of great wild game that we get to use. Also, my parents uh, provide us with a lot of fish and trout and different things like that that we use. But uh, whenever possible, we do source from Big Sky Country. But as you'll see, we have stuff coming from different places. We're going to be doing some wild boar uh, that my folks got for me, but that's actually uh, purchasable. Is that a word? It is now. Purchasable, that's a Montana word, uh, in stores. Uh, and so we'll be showing you uh, different stuff. Bison, we'll be doing bison stuff. You can see uh, bison in your local stores. Most places have ground bison.
But anyways, all kinds of different stuff on Wednesdays. It's kind of my old old motto uh, when it comes to wild game. And I actually uh, turned it into a little song that I'd like to share with you. When a wild game comes along, you must cook it. And a wild game comes along, you must cook it. Cook it into shape. On the trigger. Tastes great. Tattoo detective. It's not too late to cook it into shape. A little song I wrote. Not a big deal. No copyright issues. In the 80s, I wore a different hat. Kind of looked like a flower pot, but different time in my life. All right, onions are looking good. Let's get the garlic in there working together. Naughty mushroom. Oh, I hear police sirens in the background of Montana Max National Park based in Hastings, Minnesota. I wonder what it would take to get like a state park designation. I'm going to get my backyard designated a state park that no one's allowed into because I don't want people just camping here. All right. Huh? It does look like a state park. Got the garlic in. See some lovely smoke coming off here. One of the cool features about the Traeger is it's like, it doesn't just smoke constantly. It releases smoke in intervals. So you're never really running the risk of over smoking your food. Huh? What's that? We got a new viewer, hon. That's great. Where are they joining us from? A new viewer on Twitch. Thanks for joining us. We got everything coming together. You're at a perfect spot here. We're having fun. We're singing songs that I wrote that no one else has ever had a hand in. You must cook it. Uh, and having a great time doing some wild game tonight. Thanks for joining us. Glad you're here. All right. And if you have questions, if you have cooking questions, jump in that chat. If you don't want to jump in the chat, maybe you're a little shy. That's all right. Maybe you haven't had enough drinks yet. That's cool, too. You can always contact us on our Instagram, which is showing up right over here, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff, and get in those DMs and let me know. I love helping people expand their cooking game. We all start somewhere. That's usually the beginning. Don't be bashful. Don't be bashful. Make sure you uh, ask questions if you have any. It doesn't even have to be about what we're cooking right now. Which what we're cooking right now, we're cooking spaghetti squash that we're going to use as a vessel to serve some real beautiful elk that we are going to flavor the living hell out of uh, with onions, garlic, mushrooms, rosemary, a little bit of fennel seed. Then we're going to top it off with some different stuff. It's going to be awesome. If you don't have elk, right? Maybe you live in the city. Maybe you live in Boston and you're like, I don't know why I'm going to get some elk. That's the worst Bostonite accent, I think ever. That's more like New York cabbie, right? Hey, hey, can't you see I'm walking here while I'm driving my cab? Uh, maybe you don't have readable access to elk, right? Substitute ground beef, ground pork, ground turkey, any sort of ground meat that you enjoy, this recipe will work for too. You don't, it's not elk exclusive. I'm lucky enough to be cooking some elk, but yeah, you can do whatever you want. With any of these recipes, I always encourage people, mix it up. Whatever your tastes are, you're like, oh, I don't have that seasoning. Play with a different seasoning. Salt and pepper works. You have salt and pepper, use it. Get in there, make it your own. That's totally cool. And if you need suggestions, jump in that chat, hit that follow button or subscribe and get at me. Let me know what you need. That's why I'm here. That's why we do this. That's part of the cooking deal is interacting and sharing not only food with people, but the experience with people. And that's why I really love that's why I'm standing here like a jackass on camera. It's not for me, but to connect with you because that's what makes me happy is when we connect, we share food, we share ideas, we share recipes, and I keep doing this with my hands and I'm watching myself and I really kind of like it. So anyways, thanks for joining us on whatever you're on. Glad you're here. All right, garlic's working. Now, onions have caramelized up nicely in the pan there. I feel like I should shout when I open the lid because you get the, the Traeger noise, you know, and I'm like, all right, we're here in the mayhem, and I'm going to talk to you 
stream was out. Not the case. Sorry if I'm shouting out yet. It's not my intent. Let's get some mushrooms working in here now. Mushrooms in here. Bam. Now, add a little bit more pepper. Just a little bit. Don't need a lot. A little bit of salt. Oh, these guys, they're coming. Our good friend Spoonie McSpoonerson, which you may recognize from other episodes, he does not sign autographs. I've asked him. He won't do it, but he does love you. We're going to start cooking those mushrooms down, season them up with a little salt and pepper, with our onions and our garlic. I'm using hickory tonight. When you're cooking heartier meats, right, like beef, elk, wild game, venison, whatever it is, uh, briskets, whatever, woods like hickory, oak, mesquite, super good. If you're using things like turkey, right, say you're substituting this recipe and you're cooking with turkey or pork, even though it's a red meat, it's on the lighter end of the red meat spectrum, or fish, right? You're going to want to choose a different wood or a different pellet because those meats react differently. Do not use mesquite if you can avoid it with those kind of meats, with the lighter meats. It will make your stuff taste a little acidy and you're not going to have a good time. Use uh, fruit woods or cedars or pecan. Pecan's great for lighter meats. Pecan works for everything, but especially for those lighter meats. So watch your woods. There's like a bazillion charts on the internet that are like, here's what to cook vegetables with. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, I need an X. Uh, circle gets a square. Uh, so just be aware of what wood you're using if you are smoking or using pellets in a pellet smoker or if you're on a barrel and you're using wood chunks or chips in a kettle. Different woods can alter the taste. Lighter meats are gonna require lighter woods. It can become overpowering. You want people to have a whole taste experience, right, in their mouth when they take that bite. They don't want to just taste wood smoke that is, uh, I can never say the word, acrid. It's like acidic. It's going to taste bad as the sum of the story. So make sure you're choosing your stuff wisely. All right, we've got our mushrooms cooking down. We are then going to add in our elk here pretty, pretty quick. Let's switch this over to that. Ground elk, not for sale. Because you cannot go in and purchase wild shot elk from a grocery store. It is illegal. A hunter cannot walk into a grocery store and be like, you want to sell my elk? They will say no because that is not uh, not kosher. But this is professionally processed, which is good. And I'm actually going to hold this back up. You're good there on the camera. I can find it. There we go. Do you see that dark color to it, though, and the flecking in there? If you watched our uh, venison episode, you can see the difference. I should do a side-by-side -side picture, and maybe I can post that to our Instagram and Facebook to show you the difference between elk meat and deer meat but as you can see there from the fat flecking or what they call in beef marbling very very lean extremely lean right so you want to be careful we are cooking hot we are cooking in a cast iron pan and that's why i added all these other ingredients first to get them cooking down get those flavors working before we add the elk because if you have the elk on there you have the elk too long you run the risk of drying it out and overcooking it, and that is not what we want. All right, so I'm gonna put on my hot glove here, because I'm gonna pull the pan out here on the sliding shelf. Here, babe, you tuck that back in for me. Pulled the insides out of my glove. All right. We're going to pull this beautiful elk out here. I'm going to come up one more time so you can see that on camera. 
You see how there's not like marbling or beef fat? Just, it's why they call it flecking. It's flecked throughout the meat. All right, elk's in. I'm gonna just break it up with my hands a little bit. Super easy to do, especially with the texture of the meat. It reacts way different. Yeah, beautiful shot there, Parker, thank you. You can see that color there and how different it is. It's not red, it's not brown like you get uh, from elk, or excuse me, from beef in the grocery store. Look at that beautiful color. Look at that beautiful color. Also, completely different flavor. One of my favorite things. One of my favorite things. All right, so we got that in there. We're gonna be working that with a spoon. I can take my gloves off, throw those in the trash. Did you get that glove fix, babe? Here, go ahead and toss it to me. I can use it without it being in there. I gotta push that back in. There we go. Bingo, bango. All right. Everything's in. Almost. We're gonna get that elk cooking just a little bit here. We do have a rosemary to add. We are gonna add a little fennel seed. And now that I have the elk all spread out, people at People at home right now, they're like, he broke his cardinal rule of flavor. That's another thing I, I need to make up. Cardinal rules of flavor. Yes. On a poster board. That's color coded. Jen loves to organize. Well, guess what? You just got yourself a job. What's the cardinal rule of flavor I broke, though? I bet you don't know that there, Miss Organization. Season. Everything. Season everything. We just, I, I knew that. I knew that. I knew it. So we're going to season up the elk here. Before it cooks too much, we need to get it in there. Keep the squash working. We're using Memphis rub here from Croy Valley. Perfect all seasoning rub. Bam, seasoned, easy money. And we're gonna let that cook down a little bit before we add our last little ingredients of flavor here. All right, and I'm gonna have to open this, which I have a can opener for. We are gonna be using a little tomato paste, help richen up things, get it a little saucy. A little saucy like me after two or three beers on a live stream, yeah, a little saucy. It's hump day, it's hump day, not judge me day. Too late, she's already on judge me day. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna be adding a little tomato paste, so I'm gonna just open this can here. Awesome, awesome. Little tomato paste, a little fennel seed, and rosemary are coming along. But we want to get that meat cooking, start marinating with our mushrooms, onion, all that kind of good stuff. Bam! Tomato paste. Tomato paste is awesome. If you're cooking Italian, if you're cooking something like this, tomato paste, a couple spoonfuls into a sauce or things like that can really give you a nice texture. It adds a little boost to that tomato flavor. Super awesome. Great addition to a lot of different dishes, which you'll see us use. If you hit subscribe or follow, how else are you gonna see? They won't know. They won't know, babe. Oh, you're gonna bring that up? Jen's just brought up the two word word. Giveaways, yes. We're just kicking this channel off. We've only been on a couple weeks, but we are already in the process of doing 
an epic giveaway for the people that are following us where all you got to do is be part of the channel basically and you'll be entered to win and win big so we're compiling an ultimate grilling giving giveaway here all you got to do is be here to be with us but you have to be following you have to subscribe on either twitch or youtube and that's the only way to get entered for the awesome giveaway we're going to have lots of other giveaways that are going to be smaller giveaways which are still going to be cool but in order to be in the awesome one you got to be following you got to be subscribed and you got to be here with us so make sure you're turning on those notifications clicking that bell you got to do it i mean you got to do it if you want to win you got to be in it to win it that's what we do in montucky all right let's give our elk a little stir here already getting to the point where we're starting to brown up here does not take long with very lean meat especially when we're cooking at a higher temperature this pan's been in here at 400 degrees with the traeger you've got heat coming up around the pan on both sides of it right so you're getting that convection style cooking so you're going to have a pan that's heated all the way through. I can actually tip that up a little bit. There we go. See how it's already starting to get brown? And we do not want to overcook it. It's super lean, right? So we got to be careful. We got to keep an eye on it. All right. The other thing you want to keep in mind actually threw a little bit on the ground here which is a horrible waste of good elk meat but that was on me because i flipped my spoon around can i win a trip to minnesota you already have a trip to minnesota that you can win anytime you want it mother <laughs> like are frankie already won she's our first giveaway winner you win a trip to cook with montana max live on stream anytime you want and i'll even come to the airport and get you mother and then we can be jackasses together on camera. <laughs> Jen's excited about that. All right. So now that we got that cooking down a little bit, we got it cooking, starting to brown up. Keep an eye on it because if you overcook meat with low fat content, it will dry out super quick. So what we're going to do now is you can see me sprinkling here on the cutting board. We are going to add in our rosemary. I'm cooking on cast iron. If you've never cooked on cast iron, I love it because it gives you nice even temperature, adds a little iron because it's made of iron, cast iron. What is? Iron. iron. They always make fun of the way I talk because I'm from Montana. We have a different vowel system apparently. like mountain that's one that drives her nuts right mountain mountain climb the mountain put my flag in the top of the mountain all right so we sprinkled our rosemary in here's the one that that they absolutely drove them absolutely bonkers for a long time probably still do they just it's not as funny as it was back in the day but uh what do you get your radio in your car with right you receive radio when you're driving your car through this thing that's long and narrow that comes out of the hood of your car say it to yourself now because I can't hear you if you type it it doesn't matter antenna yes it is antenna you got an antenna coming out of your car that's how you get television that's how you get your local channels through your antenna antenna wait you think I'm some sort of prissy bitch that I say words like that no I'm a real person from a real state antenna everyone says antenna just saying all right we got the rosemary in there now we're gonna add some fennel seed 
So let's review real quick everything that's in the cast iron pan here. Tip it up. We've got rosemary. We're adding fennel seed. So it would be about a, like a tablespoon or so. Rosemary, fennel seed, onions, garlic, mushroom, of course, elk seasoned with Memphis rub. Let's give it a nice little stir here. New viewer on what? Twitch or YouTube? On the Twitch. Thanks for joining us. We're making spaghetti squash, squash that's smoked on the Traeger, smoking on anything, that's going to have a beautiful elk dish inside of it. We just got done adding all of our ingredients with the exception of one. That will be added in just a moment, but we're doing, excuse me, smoked spaghetti squash that's going to be holding a lovely elk concoction that contains elk, onions, garlic, all sorts of awesome flavors. That's going to be basically like a one bowl meal, but you don't need a bowl because the squash is going to be the bowl. And spaghetti squash is super awesome. When I was explaining to, what, uh, to Jen what we were going to do today, she's like, you're going to cut the squash into noodles. I'm like, no, it's spaghetti squash. You don't need to do that. So it was a foreign concept. So spaghetti squash is really cool. And when we pull that out, and if everything goes to plan, which it doesn't always go to plan, if you saw our mac and cheese taki balls, they tasted amazing, but they didn't look like balls because they got too warm. But yeah. And almost everyone got to eat one that's name wasn't Jen, except she ate them all. Because they were good. They did turn out. Flavor was awesome. So thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, hit subscribe, hit follow. This is all going to be coming together here, and I need to just check the time. 808. Thanks, babe. 808. So for squash to cook, most squash, not just spaghetti squash, it takes a while to cook it. We're cooking at 400 degrees on the Traeger Ironwood over here. It takes about 40 to 45 minutes. So we're getting real close because we're probably about the 40 minute mark because we put it on at 20 after. That's a little bit higher. Traeger's will fluctuate occasionally. So anyways, just about there. We'll check the squash in a minute. Make sure you use a hot glove. We'll show you how it spaghetti's up. Last ingredient going into the elk is we are going to add a couple spoonfuls of regular old Hunt's tomato paste. This is going to create a saucy effect here. So we're going to add about half this can, which is going to be about six ounces. I'll just use that spoon. Let's give her a little stir in. You know what? I need a little liquid for that. So one of my favorite things to do when I cook, and we haven't done a lot of this on, uh, on our stream yet, but you'll be seeing more of it, we're going to add a little bit of beer. Beer is an awesome liquid to cook with, especially when you're cooking heartier meats. So we're going to put that in there. That'll help the tomato paste loosen up. There we go. We'll let that rock and roll here. Perfect. Awesome. So everything's working now, working together, right? That's what we want, a symbiotic relationship of everything working together. Jen's getting hungry. She's always hungry. 
Olivia says, looking good. Yeah, Olivia, what are you going to bring for Wild Game Wednesday? Olivia is, thinks she's a hunter now, so she's going to go out this weekend and bring home something to cook. If she doesn't shoot anything, she can't come home. We want a close-up. Too bad, you'll get a close-up here in a minute. You live here. All right. Oh, we got the heat going on that. Give that a little bit of a stir. a little bit more liquid. And what I've been drinking tonight and what I'm using in the pan here, which is just kind of a happy coincidence, because you could use water or any sort of liquid to help thin up your tomato paste a little bit, but this beer infusion will work really well, especially with wild game, because I'm actually uh, using a berry ale. So it's going to bring a nice berry flavor that that alcohol will cook off. There'll be no alcohol content, especially cooking at this high temperature this quickly. But it'll bring just a touch of berryness. So you see that we've used huckleberries and blueberries and things like that on Wild Game. It'll add just, just a hint, not much. You're not going to have a beery taste unless you drink crap beer. Which I'm not gonna say names. I'm not gonna say names. You know who you are. All right. That is pretty freaking awesome. I'm gonna set that down for a minute and just tilt that up for the camera. You can see all that flavory goodness right there. We're just about ready to go. Just waiting for the last little bit of that elk to cook down. Oh, I almost forgot. It's right in front of me. I always forget one thing. I am a hunter. And watch, I'll get you a goose. Yeah. We'll see. The golden goose. We're going to add one more thing into our dish here. The last thing you want to add, and just in these moments, so I'm glad I noticed it now, but I'm glad I also did not forget so we're going to add a little fresh organic spinach in there. If it's not organic, go out to the store right now and buy organic. Jen, Jen likes that. She loves everything organic. We're just going to add in some fresh spinach. Bam. Spinach cam. Bam. Spinach cam. Bam. Spinach cam. We're going to add some spinach into the mix. Some extra nutrients, a little bit different texture, a little bit of flavor. Just the last few minutes while the elk is finishing up here, while we're waiting for that squash to get done, which is going to be any second. I got to check it here. We're going to fold that in with our elk. Just let it cook down just a little bit. You don't want it to become nothingness, right? Nothingness in your dish. You don't have to cook it down a ton. It's there for some color, too. You don't want just like a meat blob on this. You know, people eat with their eyes. You've heard me say this many, 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 many times. If you tuned into any of our previous streams, people eat with their eyes. So we just want to wilt that down just a little bit because it'll add some nice color to the dish. Like I said, it also adds nutrients. Spinach is like the most nutrient rich uh, leaf vegetable there is. That's why Popeye eats it. That's where he gets his super strength from. If you don't know who Popeye is, where have you been for like the last forever? So we're gonna get that cooked in. 
just a little bit. There we go. Awesome. Awesome possum. Put my spoon there on my Traeger tray. I don't know why we're still on that screen. And welcome back from the empty cutting board. I hope you had a good time on empty cutting board. But there's better things to be seen, like my beautiful beard. And Jen. Hey, all. Being sweet to Jen. Where'd my beer go? I was just using that for things. Oh, hiding behind the paper towels. You see that there? <laughs> How embarrassing. I better have a drink. How else am I supposed to get over that? Oh my gosh. Big moment here on Montana Max BBQ TV. David Nelson just commented. David Nelson has got a YouTube. David Nelson is in the chat. I never thought that would happen. I don't have any pheasant to smoke. I need pheasant. Go up. She's not going to get a pheasant. She's after a goose, the golden goose. No, we do not. Mom must have helped him get set up. Thanks for jumping in the chat, Dad. I love it. You need to find some pheasants. There's got to be pheasants. But I'd love to cook some pheasants on Wild Game Wednesday. Absolutely. All right. Where's my little paring knife? Or a wild turkey for Thanksgiving. I need both. And that would mean you would have to deliver it to us. So, Olivia just... Dave knows how to comment, question marks. Yeah, you're in trouble now, Olivia, because Dave apparently does know how to comment. Dave's here, and Dave's here to stay. All right. We got to be, like, right there on that squash. We got to be right there. I'm going to give the squash a little poke test. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. So I just took uh, my Gunter Wilhelm paring knife here. Parker's going to search for it, and I'm going to make him look stupid because he can't find the knife. Yeah, try to follow it. There it is. So just the paring knife, and I just poked the outside rind of the squash, and it went through pretty easily. So we're going to hope the inside is done here and see what happens. I'm going to move my cutting board because that is going to become squash zone. Because I've got hot pans, and I do not want them. And these are awesome looking. In fact, I'm going to take a picture of them. Because they did absorb some smoke. It's kind of hard to see because it is dark. Now it's getting dark earlier, which is kind of depressing. But just so you can see this later, I will take a picture of these. And they smell absolutely wonderful. And if you want to see the picture that I'm taking right now, and you're joining us on Twitch or YouTube, you can follow us. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. And we post all sorts of different content on all those channels. But now it's squash time. Jen asks, is there a reason you flip them upside down? Yes, because we want the heat coming through and cooking the internal part that we're eating, right? So that's why they're face down like that, because we want the heat from the bottom coming up, cooking them from the inside. If we had them face up, or rather, skin side down, that heat's got to come around and go in. It's a longer cooking process. So we want them in a pan. We did season these at the very beginning. If you've just joined us recently, Cut the spaghetti squash in half, drizzled with olive oil, little garlic booster, down in the pan. Super easy. Six viewers were blowing up. All right, there we go. You can see that they have roasted. I'm going to flip them over in the pan. Oh, that smell when I flipped them. Absolutely divine. 
And then you just take a little fork I do wish I had two gloves but I don't so this will be the way it is try to be quick here with the hands you can see it is they are done we did we did hit it they are super freaking hot I'm gonna actually just hold it up there we go. You can see them steaming there. But when we take a fork and just drag it across the inside, there we go, thank you. You're gonna see that it has, I'll do this. Look at that. That's why it's called spaghetti squash. We will, we'll do another one here from the, from the beginning. Pull this guy up here. There we go. So there we go. Just like that. I'm trying to get an angle on it. And we'll just drag our little fork right across the inside of it there. And I'm totally doing this backwards. My hands anyways. Not what I'm actually doing right now. If I was holding this with my left hand, actually, I can do that. I'll just use this like a hot pad. Be quick with it. There we go. Use my dominant hand here. I wish you could smell this with me because it absolutely smells phenomenal. There we go. Awesome. Hot, quick, awesome. Barely, barely have to give her a touch here. Flip her around. holder there look at that perfect there we go You just want to be careful when you get to the edges not to rip through the edge because we are using the squash as a serving vessel. Of course, we want it to look nice and pretty when we serve it to our guests. There we go. Lovely color. Roasted up nicely. Good texture. Will not taste like spaghetti. But it does have that appearance there. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Here we go. Cruising right along. Let's get some elk in here. Those nice and nice even bed of the squash underneath. Little char on the outside edge. Totally cool. Clear a little room here. Because I'm going to need a place to set down my cast iron. Don't set it down on your plastic cutting board. It'll melt right through. All right. Oh, my gosh. That is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. Let's flip it up there. That is beautiful filling that we're going to put inside there. Notice that spinach 
wilted down just a little bit, but we have some beautiful color there. We have beautiful color with the elk. Once again, to review, we have onion, garlic, mushroom, fennel seed, and rosemary, along with Memphis seasoning and a little salt and pepper that we did along the way there. This is what's gonna go inside of our squash. We're just going to spoon that in there with Spoonie McSpoonerson, my favorite spoon in the world. And thank you again for joining us, whether you're on Twitch or YouTube, wherever you hail from. We really do appreciate you being here. Hopefully you learned a little something tonight. And if you ever have questions, don't hesitate to reach out, get in touch with us. It's all about community when it comes to cooking. It's all about helping each other. All right. Now, anybody that has watched these streams know we love cheese. We're just going to add a little cheese to the top, just a little bit. or a lot. Some people like a lot, some people like a little. We'll add more to yours in a second, all right, dear? We're gonna take these and just pop them back onto the Traeger for a quick moment here to get that cheese just to melt down a little bit. And we're pretty much ready to serve. So I'm going to pull out a few plates. Jen will do her regular job as the first taste tester, and she will come up and talk into the beard. Because she's not wearing a mic, so that's what we've been calling now, because my mic's under here somewhere underneath the luxurious beard. i got to have a little piece of this elk right now, though. That's awesome. That's money. That's money. <coughs> and before we take these out, which I'm going to need room, so I guess I'll move the plates back over here for just a quick moment. But as we're wrapping things up here, we're going to pull these out in just a second and serve them up. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of our partners and sponsors, and thank you most importantly to everyone that joined us here tonight. We do appreciate you. We work with some fabulous people on the competition circuit. And those are all listed below here. Gunter Wilhelm Cutlery, Con Coolers, The Beard Struggle, Croy Valley Foods, and Double O Drum Co. You can check them out in our About sections on YouTube and our Facebook page and all that kind of good stuff. So I encourage you to do that. All great companies that we're proud to be partners with. And we use only stuff that we believe in. So thank you so much to all those guys for being a part of this and being a part of everything we do. And thank you once again to all of you who joined us tonight, stuck with us. We made it through an early thunderstorm. Jen's cold, she's hungry, so that means it's about time to go. So I'm just waiting for that cheese to melt down, which is probably good because I didn't put a bunch on, but we can put more on after we get off the air. Yep, that'll be good. That'll do. We'll just leave that guy there for a second so I can put this on a plate. Finishing touches. Time to garnish. Jen, you want to come up? Go ahead and come down to the plate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't don't worry about that. You just worry about grabbing a fork there. All right, to garnish this. We're going to take, there's Jen. First, we're going to uh, use a little drizzle of garlic and herb sauce here by Croy Valley. 
with my drizzle spoon back and forth back and forth just nice and light do a couple on the plate here just because that's artsy oh she says I'm always artsy then a little sprig of rosemary set that right there And there we go. I always do that when I'm tipping for the camera. There is our spaghetti squash that is topped with elk that has been seasoned with Memphis rub, onion, garlic, mushrooms, fennel seed, and rosemary topped with a drizzle of Croy Valley garlic and herb sauce. All served right there inside the spaghetti squash. Now, I'm going to step over here. Did you get a fork? Yeah. She's got a fork. She's going to try it out. Here we go. Make sure you get some of that squash in there, too. Get all the way down there. It's really good. You like that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So another winner here would balsamic, I think she means balsamic, not balsa ice, would balsamic glaze work? Yes, absolutely. Balsamic glaze is a drizzle with that. Balsamic would be a great addition to this dish. You like it? And she's not a fan of wild game. And if you've heard before, my goal is always to make her happy with our dishes. It is good. Really it is. Good. All right. Nice work. Thanks, yeah. babe. Yeah. Why don't you go sit down and eat? Like Taco Maniac 444. Thanks for joining us, Taco Maniac. We got to do a Taco Tuesday episode, and then Taco Maniac will be in heaven. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Taco Maniac. I'm going to show everyone plating up one more time here. We've got our spaghetti squash that we have gone ahead and I'll do a spoonful here so you can see as well this pan out of the way spaghetti squash you guys are on the first ever twitch kiss cam if this kiss is good j babe you got to come up we've been challenged if you do something funny I will follow so taco mania has given us the kiss cam challenge we said earlier in the show, we said earlier in the show, we accept challenges, and I guess it's not always food related. Come on over. Now, this is another thing you said if I do something funny. Uh oh. Which, don't worry, I, I got to be careful. I don't want to, you know, get myself into too much trouble. So, we either have to have a really good kiss or be really hilarious for Taco Mania to follow us. I know. Too much pressure. Too much pressure? They can't hear you. <laughs> Too much pressure. That's where my mic is, under the beard. Too much pressure. Well, this is for me here. I'm going to flip it right there, the full cam. But if this isn't enough for Taco Mania to follow, I don't know what would be. But let me tell you this. Oh, boy. <laughs> you are the most beautiful partner that I could ever have in the world. And I love you more than anything. Oh, babe. Oh, I love you too. Oh, <laughs> I love you too. Now go eat your food. My, did I hit mute? Yeah, All right, sorry, we're back. She got so close to me, she muted my mic. I'm sorry about that. All right, so like I said, if nothing else, 
I enjoy it like I enjoy it every day with my cute little hunter. Howdy, partner. Hey! We did it! Yay. Babe, we met the challenge! Yeah. Hey, man, we cook a lot of different stuff. We took a challenge on Friday where somebody challenged us to cook Takis on our Friday night barbecue party where we get crazy on Friday night barbecue party, right? And we cook a variety of things. So if you have a challenge that's food related, don't be afraid to throw that at us because we made two different Takis dishes, which if you're a taco man, I bet you like Takis. We made Taki encrusted mac and cheese balls. And we also made a Taki encrusted chicken breast that was stuffed with smoked cheese that we turned into an awesome Taki sandwich. So anyways, awesome. Thank you for the follow. We do appreciate it. Let's top off our little elk dish here. So we got our elk in there. We got our Parmesan cheese. We're going to use our sprig of rosemary. And we're going to just rest right down the middle of it. And then I'm going to use my famous drizzle spoon. I love my drizzle spoon. It's got a little notch on the end of it here that allows me to just fill it up. That's, oh my gosh. This is the picture plate right here. This is it. My, drizzles, my drizzle game is on point. Little more, little more. All right. There we go. There it is. In all of its glory, we've got stuffed spaghetti squash with elk that's been seasoned with onions, garlic, fennel seed, rosemary, Memphis rub, topped with just a little bit of an Italian cheese mix, and then we did it garnished with a sprig of rosemary and then a lovely drizzle of garlic and herb sauce by Croy Valley. Pretty, rustic, awesome for fall. It is squash season. That's where it is. So, once again, thank you for joining us on Wild Game Wednesday. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you to our new followers, especially Taco Mania, because I got a little action. I love any challenge where I can get a little action. You didn't see it on the side there, but I also got a little, little butt squeeze in. Should have turned it around. But anyways, thank you so much for your follow. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And remember, as always, for those about to cook, I salute you.